Hi, it's Cassie with Cassie's Parlor, and welcome to your December Art Journal Adventure Kit. OMG, I have been waiting forever to give you some of the things in here and to, um, to work with you with these different kinds of supplies and show you all the really amazing, cool things they can do. I hope you're super excited. Maybe you don't understand yet what you have in your hands, but I promise to show you as we go through the month uh, and when we do our live uh, some really cool things that you can do with these supplies. These are things that I've wanted you to have for a long time and of course I'm just giving you a sample of some of the things. Uh, if you like them, you know, like as far as like the ink color, let's say, you could definitely get more ink colors. Uh, I definitely think that everything in here are staples for your art journaling supplies or just art supplies in general. Um, things I use all the time and go to all the time. So I'm super excited to share them with you in this kit. Okay, so I'm just going to go over what you get in your kit uh, quickly and then we'll get to, to this week's prompt and we'll go through. So you get your four prompt cards, of course. Okay, um, you've got your letter. All right. Uh, the stencil this month. So a while back we had a woman stencil named Nicole. Uh, and this, I knew I wanted to make a similar one, but with a man's sort of silhouette. Um, and this time, though, I decided to give you three of them. I like having multiples and the repeats because, you know, you can just use one and um, uh, use it on your layout or whatever. And you can use, obviously, I gave you the mask and the stencil. That's why these are taped on here. So if you just take your little washi tape off. Maybe. <laughs> Easier said than done, huh? Um, so if you take your washi tape off here, okay, you can see that you have the mask of the man, all right, and it's the same shape, exactly the same shape three times. Because I really also love repeating patterns, especially when they're, they're people, faces, um, just full bodies, whatever, even if it's like a hand, a foot, like parts of a body, parts of a person. I just love that for some reason. And um, it's really cool when you can do multiples uh, on a layout, you know, in different ways. So again, you can use just one of the, you know, the stencil or the mask, depending on what you're doing. Um, or you can take all three of these out and do all three. And it's, it's just really fun. So I wanted to change things up a little bit this month as far as this goes and give you something just kind of different. So there is that. All right, let me put this back together. And this is called Men. All right. And then you get, um, we'll talk about that one in a minute. So next I gave you this self-healing mat. It's an Ulfa mat, which is a great brand. And I gave you this size. It's... Um, six by eight because it's just a good size. You can like, you know, depending what size journal you have, it can fit in your journal. If you're going to take it with you somewhere, um, it can fit in your, in your bag. I'm always, when I think about art journaling stuff, I'm always thinking about, will it travel? Will it travel? Because when I go on trips or travel, I have <laughs> one bag that I take with me for art supplies. And if it doesn't fit in that bag, I don't take it. So I'm always looking for stuff that's a little more compact, easy to use, um, super light, you know, and it's a, it's a really good mat. So um, then you also got, this isn't the same one you got. I don't have the one that you got. Um, I got them just specifically for you guys. But anyway, you have a craft knife, basically. It's like an X-Acto blade, um, craft knife, whatever you wanna call it, but you need that for one of our um, shape prompts, or not our shape, one of our prompt cards. And um, there's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. You just have to be careful and be safe when you're using it. So these obviously go together. And I think those, if you didn't have those already, <coughs> definitely those are a staple. Um, you also got a Stays on Pigment ink pad. Yay! I'm so excited for you for this because if you don't have any, OMG, this is one of my favorite ink pads of all time. You know I love ink and I have lots of different kinds of ink and there's lots of different kinds of ink for different kinds of projects and different techniques and things like that. The reason I love Stays on Pigment and, and when we get into our projects in our pages, I'll talk more about 
the differences between Stazant, regular Stazant and pigment and you know why I like it so much but really it's opaque and they're super bright beautiful colors they go on non-porous surfaces they um the 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 um containers they're in are amazing and really well designed um they stack nicely just there's lots of reasons so i'm super excited for you to have some stays on pigment ink ah look at i'm so excited i've been waiting to give you guys this for a while there are so many amazing things in here and i cannot wait to get in side of this and look at it with you. Um, so you've got clear Duralar, matte Duralar, wet media Duralar, opaque white uh, Durabrite, craft, craft plastic, opaque black Durabrite, uh, and natural chipboard. And the, the two chipboards are for the front and back cover. Um, there are six discs in here so we can make the do the binding when we're done. I would say save that for the end. You know, I've got my journal here, but actually we are just going to be working in this for this month. You can work in your regular journal if you don't want to work in this, but oh man, why wouldn't you? This thing is amazing and so, so exciting. Um, so I'm just going to take things out here just to show you uh, what, what we really have in here because some of you may not have worked with any of these graphics materials before, and um, so that's why I wanted to do this this month. We are definitely going to be using this um, in our live. Um, so we'll, we'll, you know, I'll be able to answer questions and we'll go through and we'll make some pages together there. But, um, um, sorry, <laughs> but we are going to be working in this so I can show you how different pages and types of materials work. So you've got your discs. We're going to put those aside. You really don't need those until your book is all done. So I would put them somewhere safe and where you don't forget where they are. Uh, and then we will, you know, you can bind your book when you're all done. Okay. So, um, so the, so we'll go through each one. We have clear Duralar. Let's see where that is. Uh, actually, I think this is the first one. So <clears throat> we've got clear Duralar and it's really, it's just clear uh i don't want to say acetate because it's not technically acetate that acetate has different properties but um but it's like acetate and it's just really awesome you can stamp on it you can do a lot of different cool things and we'll we'll go through each one as we're going through the prompts through the month all right then we have matte duralar and i think matte duralar might be my favorite of all time it's like a frosty, it looks like a vellum almost, but it is so much more than that. I mean, it's not a vellum at all, but it, it just kind of looks like it. It's got that milkiness and it's very smooth and satiny. OMG, like you can get this by the roll. Uh, I just, I love it so much because you can do anything on it and everything looks cool and you can kind of see through it. Okay, so you can do like layers of, of projects, you know, from page to page and have them kind of work together. Okay, next we have Wet Media Duralar. So you're gonna say, oh, what's the difference? Because it looks clear, just like the other one. But the the, the clear Duralar is thicker. It's twice as thick, actually. You can see, uh, it's hard to see because it's clear, but this um, Wet Media Duralar bends really easy, okay? It's a lot more flexible. Um, Wet media Duralar, you can take sprays. Normally, uh, sprays will not work on this type of material, but this does. Um, wet media Duralar is also one of those really amazing things. I think matte Duralar and wet media Duralar are probably my favorites just because of the versatility of them, the, the amount of products you can use on here, that it will work and dry and you know not smudge and smear. Really, really amazing. Okay, um, opaque white. Durabrite, just the white craft plastic if you've ever used it before. This works great with alcohol ink. If you don't want to use Yupo paper or something like that, you can use some you can use the um, white or the black craft plastic. Here's the black, the Dur black Durabrite. Really, really beautiful. They're both plastic papers, we'll say. And then we have the two chipboards, okay? So um those are all the pieces. So I just, in case you have opened it and you're looking through and you're like, there's two clear ones and what's going on and what are all these things? That's what they are called. They are actually packaged in order that they're listed 
in, uh, on this sheet. So if you don't know, um, there, it's listed there. You can always ask me questions too in the group, okay? And I'll be happy to answer them. So let's make a page today. So today we're going to work with the shape prompt. Okay, and today, this month, we have numbers. So it just says draw a stamp or find numbers to use. Um, find objects around your house that you could use to make numbers. So um, I have a bunch of die cut numbers. I have a die that has numbers and I have just cut them out. Some have print on them because I was using scrap paper. I could do them backwards, <laughs> some of them are backwards. Uh, with the print. But anyway, I've got all these numbers, so I was going to use them as uh, a background, really, and just um, make my page <clears throat> with numbers in the background and then maybe do some painting over it or something. And um, that is what we're going to do. So um, let me move everything aside. We'll pick our paper that we're going to work on, our type of paper, plastic paper, right? <clears throat> I'm going to keep the chipboard pieces aside. We will use those later, not um, not in this video. Okay, so for this project, I'm going to use one of the sheets of white craft plastic. The other really thing, the cool thing that I like about um, these journals is that they're not bound when you start. So you can cover this whole page, even right up to this binding, and you know let it dry, whatever, and then at the end you can bind it all and you don't have to deal with having that, um, that you know spiral edge or the disc edge and not being able to work right up to the edge of that. So very, very cool. Okay, so we're working with the white craft plastic for this project, okay? And um, this is a, basically a plastic paper. If you've ever worked with Yupo or anything like that, I already got a smudge on it, oops. <laughs> um, then it's similar to that, but it's less expensive actually than Yupo, and uh, it works on so many different things. You can use alcohol, ink. I'm going to be using acrylic paint today, um, but there are a lot of different things you can use. Definitely you can use your stays on pigment on here, which we'll be doing. But first, what I want to do is create a fun background using my uh, numbers here. So I'm going to use them randomly, upside down, backwards, you know, sideways, whatever. Some of them will um, not be fully on the page and I'm just going to play and make my layout. Okay. Okay. I like this layout. So now I'm going to stick it all down and then we'll move to the next step. So I'm just going to use gel medium. Um, use whatever kind of mixed media adhesive you have. Okay. Okay. So here we go. I'm just going to pick up each number and put some gel medium underneath and stick it back down so I don't lose my layout that I have here. And then I'm going to put a little bit over the top to make sure it's going to stay where it needs to. All right. And then keep going through all the numbers here. Okay, I think I'm happy with this. I'm going to cut off the ends and see how that looks. Easier to do it from the back, actually. So you can see exactly where you're cutting and not cutting into the page at all. This is still really wet, so probably it's better if you <laughs> wait till it's dry before you do that step, but I'm impatient. Here we go. So move this out of the way. I've got some extra numbers if I decide, you know, I want to add a little bit more, but just to give you an idea of where I am at the moment, it's kind of hard to see because it's white on white. I've got a little bit of text in there, which is pretty awesome. Uh, so I need to dry this and then I can move on to the next step. Okay, so now I've got three colors of um, acrylic paint here. This is Bria Reese, uh paint. I've got two blues and an aqua. Oh, it says ocean green, ultramarine blue, and cobalt blue. So it's like a light, medium, dark. I'm keeping it pretty neutral, or not neutral, but uh, monochrome. And then I'm going to add a pop of that pink uh, Cosmos. Stays on pigment there at the end. So first I'm just going to put a little bit of paint. Oh, it's so pretty. I love this. Uh, these paints and these colors are just gorgeous. So I'm putting a little bit of each down and I'm just going to play and I want just kind of like a, um, just 
I don't know, just kind of like a watercolory background almost. I know I'm using acrylic paint, but we can brush it on and water it down and um, just give this a nice background. I want these um, numbers to have some color to them, so I'm just going to play and see what I come up with. Okay, I'm going to start with just paint. Uh, I'm not adding any water just yet, but I, I will probably add some water straight to the page. And I'm just going here and there, obviously, you know, no particular um, design here or, you know, not really caring about um, making it look like anything in particular. I just want to lay some paint down. Now this is acrylic paint, so you you do have to be a little bit quick about things, um, because it once it dries, it's dry, you know. So if you don't want it to be, but if you don't want it to be like this, then you need to keep going. But the good thing is that it's acrylic paint, so when it dries, it's dry. You could always put another coat on top of it, you know, and change what you've got going on. So I added some water. Uh, and I'm just going to keep moving it around. A little bit of blending. I, th I want to add some of this lighter aqua kind of green color around here and there. Now the good thing is this is all the same kind of color so it's going to work fine. Also I'm going to use my finger here because I think that would look pretty cool. I want to get some like stripey washy stuff on here. Alright. Put some of this lighter color through the middle. And then I'm going to play with the water some more, let it move around, and then I might come back with some darker color after to add some accents. What I'm really trying to do is get like a watercolor-ish type wash. So I'm adding a lot of water, letting it drip around, move around. I don't want, I don't really want to see, you know, my finger marks or the paint paintbrush marks. I just kind of want it to move around <coughs> and I want you to still be able to see kind of the layout of the numbers, if that makes sense. I can use my finger to kind of move the colors around where I want them to be. It's a little bit muddy, but thankfully it's all, you know, in the same family. So I can, this is just my base. I can always go over it later with, um, you know, with more color and make it do what I want. So definitely we're working in layers here and just making a nice start and making a big mess. All right, so I'm going to dry this a little bit because there's a lot of water on here. And then we will um, do the next layer. So this these papers really are, uh, you know, I really would like you to try to step out of your comfort zone a little bit and play and find some supplies that maybe you haven't used that much. Um, you know, if you've got some alcohol ink or you've got some acrylic paints or whatever, um, just, just have a play with it. It's really, really fun. You never know what you're, exactly what you're going to get. And these papers are just, just make it so much more fun to play with. So, okay, let me dry this. All right, so while I've been drying it, um, I thought, would it be cool to take a paper towel and pick up some of the water because there's a lot of water here and it's actually really awesome. It's putting a really cool print on here. So I am going to use this paper towel to pick up a lot of this excess water in here and I'll show you up close. It looks really, really cool, actually. Here we go. So crazy, funky background, uh, which is what I wanted. I just wanted to get some color down, some nice blues with a little bit of the aqua, and it's looking pretty good to me. You can still make out the numbers, but they're totally in the background. So we will, I'll dry this just a tiny bit more, and then we'll move to the next step. Okay, this is dry now. I do have <clears throat> this little silicone brush thing, and so I'm going to um, just dip into the darkest color because I just want a little bit more of the dark. I've got a lot of middle tone here. I've got, you know, the um, <clears throat> the cobalt blue. I have a pretty good amount of that, and I've got a nice 
um, you know, a little bit of the uh, more aqua color. So I've got a little bit of the darker color, but I kind of want a little bit more and I want just this fun pattern. So I'm just going <clears> to <throat> load up my, this is like a silicone brush and I'm just making little marks here and there. Oops. And you know, this is still acrylic paint, so it's going to dry just fine on our craft plastic. I'm kind of following the pattern of the um, the numbers here. I can put some on top of the numbers. Maybe I think I need more paint actually. Um, I might be good though. Might be good. So this is another way you can add, you know, a little bit more of the drama here, or not really even drama, just contrast. You know. Okay, I like this. So that is where we are now. These silicone brushes are nice because you can just make marks like this and they, they slip and slide pretty easily and they're fun. Okay, so there is my background so far. I'm, I'm liking it pretty well. Um, it's got some good movement. It's got some, you know, good light to dark tones. So now I'm going to dry that um, layer I just put down and then we'll move to the next step. Okay, so now my background is dry. All right, so then uh, the next thing I wanna do is um, add just a little bit more of stamped kind of texture. So now the, <clears throat> the Stazon pigment color that I'm using today is the Pink Cosmos. I've just got this fun kind of weird circle background stamp and I'm just gonna ink it up and I am going to make random marks here and there. Oh my goodness. Ooh, I'm so excited. Oh, this is my favorite part. I love adding contrasting color um, marks like this in the background. It's just so striking and it really just kind of makes things pop and come to life. I mean, I'm just getting started here and check this out already. It like it actually gives me like tingles inside because it's so exciting and it's so beautiful. All right, so I'm going to put that one aside. I do also have this fun, um, like diamonds with, you know, some patterns inside that. So I'm going to use that too. I'm using a few different patterns today. Sometimes I just use one, sometimes I use two, um, or more, you know, just really depends on my, my mood. Oh yeah, that looks great. Um, you know, another thing you can do is, um, actually just like stamp, you know, ink it up once and stamp a few times, um, and you get lighter generation of the, of the ink. I think I'm good with the amount of pink that's in here. Actually, just one more little bit right there. Um, yeah, this is good. I'm happy with where we are here. And then I also have this teeny tiny little script might be easier to see on the background here. I want to add this in black because again, I've got a lot of middle going on, middle color. Um, this is the piano black, okay? So I'm just gonna add, whoops, I'm going the wrong way. I wanna go this way. Um, just adding the tiniest bit of this text here and there. Just to kind of play off the, the other text I had in the numbers and add a little bit more of that darkest color here and there, okay? And this background is very busy now, but I really love it. <laughs> I think it's pretty amazing. And so as long as you have whatever re like texture repeating pattern you have, as long as you have it a few times here and there, not all clumped in one spot maybe, but here and there, then it's gonna help your eye move around too. So this background is super busy, but I really kind of love it, honestly. So now um, there's a few ways you could go. Um, I think I just wanna add a uh, sentiment probably probably and be done because I I know it's busy but I really just love it I love looking at all the parts and um, but if you're like oh this is so busy it's too much for me um, you could always take your where is it your stamp or your um, your mask or I'm sorry not stamp your stencil or your mask and you could put it down like let's say you wanted let's say you're just gonna do one of them 
take this guy off here. <clears throat> okay, so you could put your stencil down and make and do it in black, right? Maybe I'll maybe I should do that. Let's see. Let me think about this for a minute. Um, maybe I could do one. Maybe I could do one. I kind of want them to stand this way though, and look out. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll do that for today. Uh, and then I'll put a quote next to him or on top of him. But another thing you could do is, um, you know, uh, use the opposite, right? So then you could like put him down, you could trace around him or you could put paint around him. Uh, and it, it, you know, even, especially if you wanted to do it multiple times. So then you have your pattern multiple times and then you make everything else behind it, either white or black. So then you just have a little bit of this pattern and stuff coming through. We've done that before in different kind of ways. And that's really effective if you find that your background is a little bit busier than you want it to be. Um, that's another thing you can do. I really like my background. I realize it's busy, but I'm enjoying it quite a bit. So I'm just going to get some black acrylic paint and a sponge, and then I'm going to make him black. And then I'm going to put a uh, sentiment near it. And I think that's my plan. So I said black. I went to get paint. I, I could find black, but then I saw other colors and I thought, huh, I could go Payne's gray, which is pretty close to black. But actually, what if I did white? I think I want white because it is a little bit, it's mid-tone to darkish. Um, I could do white. I also brought silver. I thought maybe silver could be really cool. Um, so now I got to decide, do I want white or silver? <laughs> maybe silver. Why not? I mean, it doesn't have to be black or white. It can be any color you want. I could make him fuchsia, magenta, right? So let's just try. Let's try silver and see how we like it. The other awesome thing about this, if I don't like it, guess what? I just change it because it's just acrylic paint. All right, so I've got my makeup sponge here. This is pretty thick paint. I'm just going to pounce. This is a, a, a textured background too, so you got to be careful if you're doing this um, because, you know, because it's textured background. So I see that this paint is not super opaque. So I'm probably going to have to do a couple of coats here. One thing I could do actually that might work nicely. I'm going to leave this stencil here because <clears throat> I don't want to have to reline it up. I'm going to dry this a tiny bit and I'm going to do the white and hope that the white gives me a better ground or base and then do another layer of silver over top of it and um, see if that helps. Okay, so I'm gonna get some white down here on my table. And again, I'm using all Bria Reese paint today. Uh, just, I have it and I haven't used it in a bit and I love it, so I thought, what the heck. All right, so I got another sponge because I don't want to have to clean that and do stuff, whatever. So, so we're going to go over with white. Yeah, I think this is really actually going to help a lot. So this is a, just another tip if you're finding that you're having trouble. You want to do a color. It's kind of not coming through as nicely as you'd like or it's not opaque enough, a little transparent, whatever. Go through with some white acrylic, not gesso, but white acrylic. Give yourself a... a a good base here and then go back over it with your color and you might have a better time and if you're putting the the acrylic paint down thin enough um, it's gonna dry pretty fast you know okay so I think we need a little bit more silver here to have another round my white is still a little bit wet so I'm gonna get my silver again and go over it mm, yeah I love this is a much better result now so it's going to be a bright silver because it's got a it's got white here under here and it's not completely a trans or I mean it's a it's not a completely opaque silver. But this is what I want, so it's going to look pretty cool. Okay, I think I'm happy. Let's see if I did 
Did it get everywhere? So you, you want to keep your sponge too. You don't want to load it up with paint because it's going to seep through. Now this already is not going to have a perfect, probably not going to have a perfect, um, perfectly crisp edge um, just because of what we're doing, but it's, it's going to be fine. Uh, but you definitely want to just get just enough paint to do what you got to do and just keep going back. You're going to have, you'll have better results that way. So let's lift it and see. I'm really happy with the coverage I have here. Oh, wow. It's much better than I expected. Let me show you up close. Oh my gosh. I, <laughs> I love this so much. I'm so glad I put the guy on here. Doesn't he look cool? Yeah, I'm loving this um, the stencil and mask. Um, I don't need to clean this, honestly, because it's just acrylic paint. There are no intricate little uh, areas that are going to get, you know, gunked up or whatever. So I'm just going to set that aside and let it dry. Um, OMG, I love this page and I love this guy so much. And the really cool thing is, did you notice, I didn't point it out, but look at this is the... This is the front orientation of how I designed this stencil and mask to be, but I wanted, and he's facing this way, right? I wanted him facing out, so I just flipped it, okay? So now you've got him going either way because it's just a silhouette. It doesn't matter, and it's a person, and he works both ways, so that is pretty cool. I love this. I'm so excited. Oh, I hope you guys love this too. I really cannot wait to hear your feedback. Okay, so... Now we've got our guy. Super happy I did that. He's got to dry a little bit. Okay, so this is dry and ready to go. Definitely. Very dry. Um, I have my Sticky Quotes book. My cover came off. Um, I like this one at the bottom here that says, Don't wait for your dreams to happen. Chase it. I think that is amazing and perfect for this. I like the white. It stands out nicely. So I'm just going to cut it up and I think I'm going to put it right, like right down along the edge of his body. I think that would look really cool. So I'm just going to cut up each word like I do and place it down and then I'll have a final sort of like, you know, placement of where I think stuff should go. And I'll use the gel medium again to stick this down. Uh, it just works really well and it's matte and it's clear and it's a nice way to finish. Okay, so I'm gonna put some gel medium over, just over the words, that's really all you need. The rest of this is all paint anyway, so no big deal. Um, making sure that it's gonna stick really well, it's not gonna come up ever, and gonna stay stuck down. Now I need to dry this because I do want to trace around him and trace around my words a little bit. So let me dry this gel medium really quick and then um, we can do some finishing touches and be, be all done. Okay, so I'm gonna outline him with black. I've got just an acrylic paint pen here. I like him to be outlined, really kind of sketchy, you know, not perfect for sure. Um, just, just a nice sketchy outline. I actually kind of want a thicker one. I thought I wanted a thinner outline but I think I want it to be a little thicker yeah just a little more pronounced oh yeah and it's tricky because we're going over layers so um, you know we've got the three or the well there's a three right there but we've got the numbers here so we're definitely going over layers so it makes it a little bit trickier so just got to take your time um, and do it you can definitely do thinner or thicker you could do colors there's so many things. Lots of doodling opportunities here. <clears throat> okay. All right, almost done with this part. Okay, now for the, um, for the letters, I do want the thinner um, paint marker just because they're really close together and it'll be a lot easier to to get in between these little spots and I definitely want this to be sketchy you know like really just rough sketch kind of kind of look here I really love it I do I do want to do some other doodles um, but I definitely have to wait <laughs> so we have got 
our focal point and the awesome phrase there and the really cool background. And I'm loving how these um, darker blue marks are kind of outlining our guy too. So very, very cool. So yay, we got through our first journal page with the, um, let's find it, with the Mixed Media Journal by Graphics. We used the opaque white craft plastic, the Durabrite, and we did the number prompt, the shape prompt of numbers, and we used the men uh, stencil here. So I'm so excited. I love this page so much. I think it's a great first page for our month of mixed media journaling with graphics. So yay. Okay. I can't wait to see what you do. You can pick any paper, any of the papers you want to play with and try. If you want to work on the white craft plastic, that's great. But honestly, if, you, if you're just really curious about what some of the other ones do and you want to have a go and play with it, feel free. Use any of the papers you want. If you're like, ah, I'm not feeling quite ready for this. I'm just going to work in my regular journal. You may also do that. You do whatever makes your heart happy, okay? Just uh, work on the numbers prompt and work in any journal you want or piece of paper or anything, okay? So I can't wait to see what you come up with. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.